Good evening, I'm Scott Hartwick, and this is a special live episode of Photography After Hours. Uh, today, uh, in the studio, we have a guest with us. We have Mark Morris from Tamron Lens. Hey, Mark, how's it going? It's doing great, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Yes. This is awesome, actually. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, a couple of things. Photokina, everyone's talking Photokina. As they should. It's like the biggest Photokina in probably 20 years. Yeah, it's really huge. It's so, phenomenal. so. What are you hearing from the Tamron booth from the folks over there? Uh, we actually did what would have been our bigger announcements early on. I think actually 2019 is probably going to be a bigger year for us, to be quite honest. But um, we have two new lenses that are just hitting the market as we speak. We have the uh, 15 to 30 uh, G2. So this is the, uh, the 15 to 30 2.8 G2. Uh, anybody who's familiar with the Generation 1 knows it was already a lens that set standards. Uh, the Generation 2 looks similar, but uh, it has all new glass, new coatings on that glass, a new stabilization unit, new autofocus unit, a new body jacket, and also now USB programmability. So we can actually profile it to six different cameras. Uh, we can actually improve its behavior specifically for videographers. Uh, underneath all of our new SP lenses is actually kind of a hidden gimbal mode in the stabilization unit. So you can go into the computer, set the gimbal mode on the lens, and then actually take it out, and it looks a lot better when you're running around with it as a videographer. Oh, wow. Um, cool. So videographers can set their own profiles. Still photographers can set their own profiles. It's a, it's a brilliant way to keep you future-proofed. It's a good investment because now you can actually learn how to do video. A lot of photographers are being forced to do that. Yeah. Uh, and it's a lens that's kind of built to keep you up to date as we go. She does. The only thing that she didn't improve on the old one was that she, the old one was a three-pound lens. This is a three-pound lens. Three so, yeah, it looks like a big, heavy piece um, of glass. It in the is. Front. Um, it's uh, basically a full metal jacket. Um, the, one of the greatest things about the new coatings, in particular, on the new glass formula, is that it's at least a half-stop brighter transmission than the old model. Oh, wow! That's a lot. So, as a starlight gathering lens, which is something that I prefer doing, um, I like going out in landscapes in the middle of nowhere at night. Uh, it's uh, this is the perfect lens for it. Uh, as you can see from the graphic on the screen. Uh, she is sealed uh, front to back and then also flooring coatings on the front element so yeah. nothing sticks to it. Uh, I've been known to do like tic-tac-toe with permanent markers and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, good uh, top view as you can see there. Um, this one's a pretty straightforward design. Only two switches, autofocus, manual focus, and the stabilization on and off. Uh, the second lens that we introduced uh, was its little sister. Not everybody wants a three pound ultra wide zoom lens. Not everybody wants to spend $1,300 on an ultra wide zoom lens, but people do like a brighter lens and people do like a weather sealed lens and people yeah. do like resolution. And so this little guy is the 17 to 35, 2.8 to four. Uh, obviously a variable aperture allows us to shrink it, but it's still a full frame compliant lens. Uh, we did remove the stabilization unit, which takes about a half pound off um, and also shrinks it considerably. This is the same size as most people's crop sensor ultra wide lenses. Sure. And it is the uh, smallest and lightest ultra wide zoom lens on the market today for full frame lenses. Very cool. Um, it's uh, everything we do ships with a hood. So this is the lens that it, as it is with the hood. You'll see obviously it's weather sealed and gasketed. And just like the bigger professional lenses, it's also flooring coated on the front end. On the front, yeah. um, we are currently the only company that weather seals all of our lenses. And it's just uh, when I don't have a camera R&D budget, I can move that money elsewhere. <laughs> Very simple for us. Uh, so uh, the Nikon versions of these lenses are shipping now. Uh, the Canon version will be basically first week of October. Okay, cool. So yeah, so you, know, you talked about the, the the variable aperture. Yes. And for me, when I'm when I'm doing ultra wide angle stuff. Yeah. That's really not that big a deal. No. Oh, as soon as you get out a few feet, almost everything's in focus anyway. Absolutely. So yeah, I don't think that's the downside. So on this one, it's, wow, this is really light. <laughs> it is. This is really nice. Yes. Um, so you said that was 1300. How much does this come down? 599. 599. That's, well, that's a really good deal. So it's, uh, aside from the weather ceiling, the reason why it's not an SP lens, which is our, our high-end lens, like a Canon L series or an Icon N series or mm -hmm. Sigma Art, we call them SP. We all have our names. Sure. Um, all SP lenses are all metal. This is half metal. Okay. Um, and it's a good way to keep the weight down, um, but also a lighter weight lens like that, when it hits, it doesn't necessarily need a metal jacket. In fact, plastics will flex better. Yeah. And so it's, it, it may be able to take an impact better than a three-pound metal lens, frankly. Uh, but it's uh, it does keep the weight down and it allows us to weather seal it for cost effectiveness as well. That's a very cool piece. I it's like that, yeah. sweet. And yeah. um, what's really cool is it inherits a lot of the new coatings from its big brother. Mm -hmm. And so the flare control on that lens is professional grade. Oh, wow. So that is a little landscape piece that you can take out. It's not just good for architecture or environmental portraits. You can point it directly at the sun and have your sunspots look awesome. Really cool, yeah. yeah. Very cool, nice. Yeah. It's, it's, been a, it's actually been a really good year for Tamron, we all know. 
A lot of people know that we released a new lens for the Sony full frame mirrorless system since obviously that's where all the cameras are suddenly going. Um, yeah, and, thing, uh, and that lens we have not been able to keep up on demand. So it's, uh, it, it kind of exploded out of the gate. We basically sold our annual allotment, our projection, in about 72 hours nationwide. And so we kind of got stuck in the, uh, we better make more right now situation. Yeah, wow. Um, and, at, and with Photokina basically becoming the seminal mirrorless show, even though our friends at Panasonic really introduced mirrorless 10 years ago, uh, it's, it's nice to see that after a decade, it's finally fully accepted as the open genre. Yeah, and, and I've always seen it as the future. Yeah. But personally, I've been waiting for some of these mirrorless to go full frame. Yeah. And so prior to Photokina, we had our first announcement with Nikon coming out with two cameras. Yes, the Z-series cameras look very promising. Very promising. A goal, there was a lot of controversy, always controversy when, yeah. when there's change, right? We don't always like our change, <laughs> do we? It's, it's true that, uh, and, and it's funny how even the smallest changes can weird people out. I know. Just, uh, I, in fact, actually, if, if you don't mind me saying so, there was a point at which uh, live view was considered a consumer hack. Like um, when, and, and, and let's be honest, let's put, put it out there. Olympus cameras were the first to put out live view on the E330. Uh, way back when uh, people were thinking four thirds wasn't going to be a thing either. Right. Uh, and, uh, and the only reviews, and I'm calling you out, DP Review, you guys just called it ugly and useless. And uh, that's pretty much your words. Um, and uh, everyone was like, I'll never use live view. Only amateurs Only use point amateurs and shoot use, live view. I was going to say view. professionals don't and, use, they use and, a viewfinder. And now what you see every day in the UN press pool, guys holding their cameras over their head with that tilt screen yeah. flipping down because live view is a priceless tool. Well, and, it's, and now it's they're just complaining because the, the screen doesn't flip enough is usually the complaint now. Yeah, they so. want fully articulated. They want to spin it around. A lot yes. of people want to do it yes. so they can vlog with it. Absolutely. Uh, and and their, the, the resolution's good on them now. Yeah. They're, there's no lag on Refresh them Refresh rate, yes. They've gotten so much better over the past few years. It's, they're pretty impressive. It's nice, i got to say. Um, impressive. And, and, it's, and it's funny because everyone's complaining about the, the single card slot on the Nikon. And i I, I got to say that if I'm going to have a single card slot, I like the XQD card. It's it's a brilliant delivery system. It's super stable. It's super fast. Sure. Uh, it's 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 just a consistently high quality piece of tech where SD cards generally are not. Right. Um, well, and so, so the XQD cards are actually more robust yeah. just in construction yep. alone. It's, uh, so I've seen them go through dishwashers in YouTube videos. Like people just they treat them poorly on purpose just to show you what just they to see what through. happens. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I've, good. Destructive yeah. testing is good. Absolutely. Yeah. It's true. I mean, I used to do that with my old E1, the Olympus E1. We used to put under downspouts. We'd stick it in the sink. You, yep. know, you name it. So yeah. just to see. Yeah. People need to know what happens. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So. Lots of other news happening. Photokina is becoming huge. Yes. A lot of new cameras. So we started with the Nikon. Yep. Then Canon came out. EOS R. They, did, they yep. did some similar things that, that Nikon did, and they're jumping into the market, which is good. And if people want to hate on it, that's great. Don't buy it. There's plenty of people are going to buy it. It's um, but it, it's still a growth market. You know, it, uh, those of us that hang out in the industry, we get spoiled. Yeah. Right. We we in fact we actually get jaded, to be quite honest with you. And and sometimes I think professionals, in particular, working pros. Um, we end up focusing on just the gear that's worked for us for so long that it's kind of our side note to go, yeah, I guess that's cool, whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, if it's good for you, whatever. But there's also the negative side. There's a number of pros that just if it isn't what works for them, it's automatically useless. It's automatically no good. Right? And, that's, and, and what we really want is the continued innovation of any company. I don't care if it's Canon or Sigma or Nikon, Tokina, whoever. If you've got something new to bring to the table, it's going to force all of us manufacturers to sit up and go, this Take is something look. we need to we need to consider. Yep. Um, so it, with, with Canon in particular, where it, it, it does seem like they've been a little stodgy in coming to the plate with mirrorless, um, they definitely got more serious with the M5 and the M50 in particular because those are little baby 80Ds, like uh, the ADD camera. That's what they're built on, built on is that architecture, and that's a really complete little mirrorless product. Right. Um, but to some, maybe a little too little too late, but now they've got a full-frame camera with a, a lens mount architecture that's got a good future in front of it if they, if they actually put the pedal to the metal. Yeah. And uh, you know, speaking of tilt screens, they are the only guys that got the tilt screen correct. So um, everybody's got a good and everybody's got the bad, so so you know, it's uh, it'll be exciting to see what each company has in their plate as far as that's concerned. Yeah. So. So then after so we got into Photokina, we got more mm -hmm. announcements. Yes. More cameras came out. It, it's been huge. Yeah. Fuji's got some new stuff coming out. Oh man. They're they're kind of setting the world on fire. Everyone's looking to the few to the Fujis now. Well, it, it, well, for, they they clearly have gorgeous architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, the the way their cameras are designed, the utilitarian look of them, the nostalgia appeal. They like to pull on the heartstrings and. 
everybody wants a rangefinder style look or just they, they just like how it feels in the hand. Um, I actually am enamored and have been enamored with their medium format system since it came out. Um, you know, I, I was joking, but not joking. I was actually dead serious when I, I talked to my company president and told him we needed to revive the Bronica line because one of the last great cameras Bronica released before the end of the line was a rangefinder medium format like camera, camera, the yeah. RF645 or the 645 RF. But uh, I was like, we should bring that back. And the next thing I know, Fuji's basically done that for me. So my company president, who laughed at me when I asked for that, uh, Fuji at least heard me telepathically and said, Mark needs a rangefinder medium format. And there it, it is. Wants, yeah. There it is. And I'm just like, it's beautiful. And I must eventually have one uh, after I get my raise. Um, and then, uh, but, but it's nice to see that now there's a, a medium format product that's becoming within price range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, uh, they're attainable. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to just lease them for, for a weekend because you can't afford to buy the yeah, thing, when, right? when you're looking at a body that's sitting at twelve to $20,000 and your lenses start at four grand, you have to start going, so which one of my kids do I sell this week? It's, it's difficult. <laughs> uh, but, but Fuji is really looking at that market. They did the right, they, everybody's chosen their niche. If you're not in full frame, you'll build a really good crop sensor system that seems reasonably complete right and then skip over full frame and go for something larger and then and then say who's the crop sensor now full uh, full frame right so it's a uh, it's well yeah and so see. so fuji did they did a what's essentially a crop sensor medium format yep. sensor yep so they're between that that full medium format and yep. the 35 millimeter full frame and it's, it's it's an interesting niche they did crop sensor and then went to another crop sensor but I don't know. They've got a 50 it, megapixel and a 100, 100 megapixel. megapixel. Yeah. It, it, the, obviously, the larger sensors allow for the bigger, bigger sensor sites. So yep. um, it's not even necessarily about that linear acuity, which is still the lens's job. I'd like sure. to remind the world it's yep. still the lens's job to bring that to the table. Resolution and pixels, really, in, in another term, are basically units of color potential. And that's what we're looking for is the amount of dynamic range that a sensor can pull. And the bigger those sensor sites are, that's what this camera's going to do. That's where you get that. Oh, man. In the studio, in landscape work, it, you're going to be able to pull things out of highlights and shadows that the full-frame cameras can't see. Right. It's, uh, it's going to bring those, those genuine benefits of medium format back to the table. Sure. And the portrait photographers love, always love the medium format for their... The way they, they render skin tone. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Unbelievable. There's nothing yeah, quite like it. It's because of that dynamic range. That but, but you had mentioned something about the lens, and, and yeah. we always hear this when we start talking about these huge megapixel numbers, mm -hmm. that is there going to be lenses to be able to resolve all that? Yes, well, obviously. Um, well, at least that's the hope. <laughs> right. Um, so it's, it, it's, it's, it's really pixel pitch. It's not even so, many, so much the quantity of pixels, more that it's the quantity of pixels given the surface area that that reside on. Right. So if I have a 36 megapixel full frame sensor, but I have a 36 megapixel medium format sensor, I have way more space to work with on the medium yeah. format sensor just because the, the, the size of the sensor sites. Um, it, there is a problem with diffraction limits where the, the lens can only resolve so much as, and given the F ratios it's using, quality of the glass and the corrective value of the lens. Um, and that's, that's where some of the smaller sensors actually have some issues because they're tinier, but they're still trying to compete resolution wise. And so if I start seeing like a 36 megapixel, say medium, uh, not medium, uh, micro four micro thirds, four thirds, we're going to really push the boundaries of optical Pixel design for that. Really high, yeah. It's tough. I either have to lose sensitivity on the sensor, which will happen to a certain point because of physics, or I have to start making bigger lenses to allow for that corrective and focal factor, mm -hmm. um, which still will mean smaller lenses and smaller bodies for micro four thirds if they decide to go that route. But in the end, there's a, a law of diminishing returns. Um, both the camera manufacturers and the, and the lens manufacturers have separate issues. Our issue is definitely resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, but coming with resolution is the secondary issue of transmission value. If I go for just pure acuity, I will drop stops off of my ability to transmit light to the sensor. And that's why some of the full frame cameras, people are still like, well, I, I bought this mirrorless full frame from Sony, but look at their 24 to 70. It's a three pound beast. I thought it was supposed to be smaller so, and lighter. So it's supposed to be a light package, right? But yeah. they also have a 42 megapixel sensor that needs to be satisfied. Yep. And a photographer that says, I'm not willing to sacrifice transmission to satisfy resolution. And so that's an important point yeah. because a lot of people are just like, well, yeah, it's my light camera. The body weighs nothing. Absolutely. But there's a three and a half pound lens. And this is the reason why. I don't think many people even talk about that. The, they just complain about the weight. The image circle can't change. Focal length is a linear 
re uh, a linear measurement, right? Right. And it's, oh, it's measured at infinity, but that is a linear measurement, and 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 that's why the, the you get into those big fights online and, and forums with a bunch of angry old white photographers um, <laughs> about equivalency. What's the f ratio? Is sure. one point seven the same on a micro four thirds as a one point seven on full frame? No, it's not. Okay, I think we can all agree on that, um, but that's not really the point. Um, it, it, it comes down to the fact that the focal length about stays a, a, the same. Effective focal. Uh, yeah, so equivalency is just angle of coverage, and that's right. dictated by the size of the actual format. Yeah. Um, but it, a 24 millimeter lens stays a 24 Four millimeter, millimeter lens. lens. A 400 millimeter lens stays a 400 millimeter lens. There is no magic that makes a 400 millimeter lens an 800 millimeter lens just out of the blue, unless you put a teleconverter on there. Yeah. And even then, that's really just spreading the image. Um, so, but with focal length staying the way it is, um, a 400 millimeter lens will always be big. It doesn't matter what camera you put it on. Right. Um, but if I also have a larger image circle to deal with, it will have to be bigger to compensate for that. Yeah. And everything moves in multipliers of four. As I double resolution and then also move up a size in sensor format, the lens has to get a lot larger. Yeah. Uh, every, we always joke, everybody wants a 16 to 500 f1.4. They want it with stabilization. They want it to be able to project the near future in Braille. Yeah. Uh, so as, I don't as want that. I, what I wanted was a, <laughs> was a 10 millimeter to 1,000 oh, f.95. That's all I needed. Uh, well, you dream big on the f ratio yeah. side uh, i can dig that that's easy that's obviously no, no, a crop everybody, sensor yeah, everybody lens. wants one lens that does yeah. everything that's that's going to be on the yeah. new fingernail sensor and the iphone 11. iphone 11 <laughs> iphone 11s yeah, the 11s yeah it's got to be bigger. don't give them everything at once <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but it will be obsoleted by firmware it's okay yeah um, but it's it's true that the, the 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 sensor size still dictates to a certain amount the size of the lens on the front you gotta you have to sacrifice yourself for the circle and for the resolution sure. and for the transmission Still keep the lens big. It's the only way to do it right now until we come up with something else. Yeah. Do we change physics? Uh, I, I, well, yes, or at least uh, use liquid lenses. Liquid lenses. You know, that, uh, they've been experimenting with that for the last decade. Um, and wow. that's uh, And that's basically how your eye works. It works. It's changing the shape to focus light. Yep. If we could figure out a way to, to create a fluid system in a lens, that would be it. We'd be, we'd be there. Yeah. That would be awesome. That's Science cool. fiction now, uh, truth later, you know. The, oh, lenses, right. we're, the lenses we're doing today, and in, in the 1990s, yeah, yeah would, uh, the people were like, that's impossible. We have an 18 to 400 millimeter that actually takes decent photos. So what were are the you kidding me? What were the megapixels on a camera in, in 1990? <laughs> uh, Two? Uh, in 1990? Uh, they would, that would have been VGA, a 640 by 480, right thereabouts. So you, if you had a 1.3 megapixel, you're spending four or five grand. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's, so, that, and that's way, way, way back. That's, that's before that was even really commercially available to most of us. Yeah. You know, there was no so stabilization. It, that there was would have none been, of those things. That would have been really like scanners <laughs> at that point, too, because yeah. 90 was really before. Really, you didn't see a knee bend in digital camera uh, architecture being purchased where it, was, it had parity with film architecture until about 2000. Yeah. So, it, yeah, that would have been Not even that before. that long ago. You know, it, it's sad because some people, when they learn things, they get challenged. Right. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> it does. What happen. are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in that case, like, um, you know, continue on with Photokina because sure, it just it, it yeah. just keeps getting bigger. What else bigger. have you been hearing? Uh, well, we're I mean, all reading, we're all reading the articles. The, the, and since, since the full frame <clears throat> resolution is underway, obviously, um, Panasonic, who again they were the first guys to go mirrorless back in 2008. Um, it, uh, by the way, I was in the Rockefeller at uh, the Rainbow Room at Rockefeller Plaza for that unveiling. Oh, back, um, back yeah, in the day. There, were yeah. like, there was like 45 people from around the country and all the Panasonic gurus, and they showed us the G1 and the presentation for the G1. And, uh, and I was there at the table with, at the time, uh, my supervisor, who's the owner of Mike's Camera in Boulder, Colorado. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, we both looked at it and went, that's amazing. Uh, and this is it. And at the time, it just looked like a, just a, a, a DSLR had just came out of the microwave. You shrunk it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and now, of course, uh, uh, that was the beginning of Micro Four Thirds, which is the beginning of the mirrorless revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Now, of course, Panasonic it, said, well, we're not going to ditch smaller sensors, but by God, we're tired of hearing about full frames, so we're going to come out gonna full. We're going to do that too. Bore. Yeah. And, and if their specifications are matched out and if they meet the promises of even 80% of what their spec, uh, specs look like, it's I can't even begin to speculate price point, but it's going to be an amazing product, I got to yep. say. Um, and it's smart of them to go into a coalition where they have two optics manufacturers coming to the table with them, Leica and Sigma. I think that's sure. fantastic. 
again, one of those things where it's going to be good for the industry. It's going to make everybody sit up, take notice, and, and uh, step up their game. It's going to be a spec war. Yep. Um, the uh, the one thing that everybody has to hope for, because specs are awesome, and this goes for lens companies as well. Um, if it's not usable, it doesn't matter how good you think it is uh, on paper. So hopefully sure. it's got ergonomics. Hopefully it's got a menu system that people can move around in and customize. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, hopefully it doesn't weigh five million pounds at simultaneously or need a bunch of dry ice to keep cool while you're recording 4K <laughs> at 120p or whatever it's probably going to do. So For only 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Well, uh, no, they pay their fees, so you can go as long as you want on yeah. a panty. So that, that's, exactly. they do really well with that. So. That's very um, cool. Uh, so uh, the full frame guys, uh, everybody is like, you got to go full frame to be professional. Now you have five million choices. So, uh, so There's take your something. sides and pull out your weapons. Let's yeah. see what you can do in the forums. I'll stay out of it. I will be curious to see how it goes. <laughs> That's, um, I'm excited. So, so we were talking earlier, and I do a lot of uh, product and still life stuff. Yes. So I'm sitting on a tripod anyway. Oh yeah. But I'm looking for the mirrorless because I don't want mirror slap. Oh sure. You know when I makes perfect sense. That. So I'm gonna sit and watch. See where the, where the dust settles. Oh, man. And I'm going to pick good. one of these suckers up. And, uh, <laughs> at that point, quite honestly, you know at the sensor quality today is outrageous. It's crazy. Uh, it, just, it just keeps going, getting better. But uh, uh, you're going to be looking at your lens. Who's going to have the, the, the flatter field? Who's going to have the acuity, not just in the center, but in the corner? Mm -hmm. um, transmission equivalents across the bay. And no chromatic aberration, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Because <laughs> there's just one more thing to deal Absolutely. with. Absolutely. Yep, we don't like that. You know, it's funny, uh, considering that, that's actually the one corner you'll see optics manufacturers cutting more than any other. Uh, because chroma uh, correction is a, is a value that's so linear that we can fit it into a lens profile for Capture One or Adobe or whomever. Whoever. Um, you just have to hope it's not a ton of correction because it does lower the contrast profile and it lowers the sharpness of the image to do the correction. But it, it, if I want acuity and I want less vignetting, which I would prefer to have less vignetting because yeah. sometimes a corrective value for vignetting causes posterization. Um, I may have to allow a little chromatic aberration. So posterization, you're talking about like banding? Color yeah, banding. banding. Um, As just, most people know it as color banding. Uh, color banding, yeah. Yep. It's a, a, or a bad grade from one, one step to the next right. in, in gradation. In tonality or something, Because um, yeah. sometimes a, a corrective profile in Adobe uh, doesn't read it correctly. Mm -hmm. And once it does it wrong, it's ho so hard to fix. Yeah. So there is that. So it's, I'd rather give you chromatic aberration, which is a slider, um, than vignetting if I can help yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, so. yeah. Very cool. So, so all these mirrorless cameras. So no. we're kind of stuck on the mirrorless. Thing. I, well, it's, it's, it's a big deal. We're it all is. Talking it about is. It. it is the so, conversation, so man. One of the other things that I would like to see with the mirrorless cameras, and I'm not sure why it's not done, or maybe someone's doing this. No. But sync speed. Why can't we increase ah. the sync speed, right? So uh, that's so. If it's electronic shutter. Yeah, that's basic because the electronic shutter is still not global. Right. Uh, and, and in case you guys don't know, a global shutter is a shutter that grabs all the pixels simultaneously and creates an image all at once. Right, uh, all, right now, currently in, in, in any, uh, at least as far as digital imaging, consumer grade photographic equipment, uh, all images are created by a scan of the sensor. And as I scan, most of our strobes uh, rely on multiple duration or at least one long duration. Yep. Um, it, it will create banding across that scan because the scan is not seeing everything equally. Uh, so we are waiting for the one camera to finally come out that can do global shutter. Um, there is truth to the fact that, uh, to a certain extent, not blaming anybody, this is an industry problem, sure. where focal plane shutters can be made to sync faster. Uh, 1 2 50th has been done, 1 300th, 1 3 20th has been done. Quite frankly, micro four thirds could do it because they have less travel. Sure. Um, they could easily do a 1 500th oh, focal plane distance. shutter. Yeah, um, distance, they, yeah, sure. yeah, so they could do that, they just didn't invest in it. Right. Uh, so part of it's the camera manufacturers cutting costs somewhere, or not even realizing that it's really, people want it. Um, when people talk about sync speed, they usually talk about it photographer to photographer, but no one discusses it with the manufacturer. Right. And so everyone's still reliant on uh, the multi-strobe uh, capabilities of high speed high sync, speed where sync. they're right. dropping it between the shutter blades. Uh, or you just go leaf shutter and stick with your medium format. <laughs> yeah. So there's a reason why medium format is still awesome, everyone. It's not yeah. just resolution. Yeah. It's because right out of Absolutely. the box, it's one five hundredth of a second, no problems. Uh, so it's you know there that is the that is one of the issues where no one's invested in a better shutter. 
And so we're all waiting for the sensor architecture I'm to waiting. catch up. I'm yeah. waiting. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm looking forward be, to it. It's going to be a big day when that, someone announces that. There are a couple, I know, uh, and I can't speak for every brand, but I know Sony has uh, a very high-end broadcast cinema uh, recorder that does have global capability. Mm -hmm. But it's in that, you know, $100,000, $150,000 price category. Yeah, yeah, it's not the kind of so, thing everyone gets. They'd rather have a house. Uh, that would definitely, yeah. yeah, or, you know, or, or your kid probably back from, you know, layaway. Yeah. Uh, so it, yeah, but it's 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 coming. I mean, if you look at the the, the curve of development for digital imaging, mm -hmm. it's un it it's nothing like you've ever seen before. It really is where to the point where in the last 15 years we've posted the 90 years of analog uh, corrective value that took place. In fact, they actually hit a standpoint where not a whole lot was changing for analog. Honestly, if if digital hadn't come around, the, the there still would have been professional photographers, but people were losing the love for the art. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and going digital is what really saved it. So everybody, I mean, you know, we're, we were going to talk about the iPhone 10. Uh, we might as well. I mean, that's we can. Uh, it's, it's a camera. Uh, it's absolutely. It's I a camera that you text with. Yep. We don't make phone calls, but we do text with. No, them. I don't. I prefer not to call. Um, exactly. as, as much as possible. Even my kids use four different forms of communication with me, and none of them. None are of them the are phone. phone. Yeah. So it's. Uh, in fact, in fact, I get more. Uh, text messages in regard to Instagram and Facebook and Pokemon Go uh, than I do anything that's, that's else. That's important. Yeah, I even have stores that communicate with me via the text message and Facebook. So earlier, no. you had mentioned you're not quite an Apple fanboy. I so I was. <laughs> so um, last year was my first year in 31 that I had no Apple product in my house. None. I none. Then literally, it's all done. Um, and uh, if, so for me, it, it, you know, we all have to make the decisions based on our own workflow and our own preferences. And uh, I felt that Apple had left the professional photographer behind. Um, I'm not invested in iOS, so I didn't have the ecosystem in, mm. in play that a lot of people do. I, do, I have yeah. a lot of respect for the iPad. It's a phenomenal piece of architecture. I don't have a lot of respect for the iPhone. I think, unfortunately, for me, um, it looks too much like a two-year-old Google phone. <laughs> it's, it's, it's utilizing architecture and input and, uh, and theories of process that were done well before it did it. Um, but what they're doing is figuring out how to keep you tied within to their, uh, their ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. I don't like being bricked. I don't well, like the being are, boxed. They're the only ones that really do that, though. It's, it's a brilliant, if you are in it and you know the flow, like I know you do, like mm -hmm. it's, it's brilliant for those folks. Yeah. And you know how to use it to efficiency as a professional at work. Yeah. Um, but I view it also as a, a box that they put in the standard consumer who doesn't know any better. Who doesn't know that they could, in fact, get out, and all they do is get sure. get confused by anything else that might be as good or better, or even more efficient for what they do. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, I pre, did the same thing where so prepackaged, right? Yeah, of course. Prepackaged, it's their hardware, or their software, it's oh, all prepackaged. Yeah. And for the people who don't want to fiddle with it, because I have two grown boys in their twenties. Ah. And they love to fiddle with stuff, so they're definitely Android guys. Right? Ah, totally. Yeah, they just love that, yeah. and they like. Well, I got an app for this and an app for that, and I said, "Yeah, that's great." But when you try to send me a text message with something on it, it doesn't come through. That is, or if I try to send you something yeah. and it has a photo in it or something, you don't get it because you've got this sketchy little app. And it's not always the sketchy little app. I'm going to be blunt. That's so the other reason why I left is because when I was working for Sony, yeah. um, one of the great things that Sony did that everybody said wasn't going to be useful, but now everybody likes to have, is near field communication. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I could walk up to an Android phone with my A7S and go boop, and my and it transfers the image right over, That's or cool. it turns on immediate control of my camera right there. And Apple was like, I'll put NFC on there, but for Apple Pay. And that's it. And, and in fact, we do it. And in fact, it's so clearly deliberate in their, in their methodology of saying, we'll buy it, but we're not going to let you play with it. Yeah, so there's a new regime it, there, isn't there? It, it's, it's, and there's, it's, there's just, definitely it's, evidence it of this new regime. It seems short-sighted and yet Mr. Burns, you know. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. Smithers, let's just screw them one more time. One more time. You know, or just, just don't give them just, all of it now. Don't give them all of it now, because if you pace your architecture, it's profitable. And when you're at the top of the heap, profitability actually becomes a hard question. Yeah. How do you maintain that growth? Yeah. And the only way you can do it is by slowing the pace. Slow feed. Yep. That's it. So, so and, and, and I wasn't interested in that for me. Like I also, I also am Adobe free <laughs> because <laughs> really? of the same reason. I can't deal with XML sidecar packets. I want a company that licenses my raw data. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with a company that pays hackers to break into my file and go, this is what I think you shot. I want what I shot. That's it. Yeah, we know um, what we're doing. And, right? e and even yeah. Affinity Pro will give me what I shot. Uh, and and Adobe doesn't do that. They won't. won't they won't pay for the license. Mm. And that just for the biggest of the big, that just seems short-sighted to me. 
So, so for my purposes, I left Apple, I left Adobe, and it's been a very interesting journey doing so. Very cool. Yeah, but it's uh, but you know what? It, there are some amazing things out there. It's just how it works for me. That's all. Yeah, everybody's got their own personal preference yeah. and what works for you. Of course. And we're all uh, image creators, and we're all having a good time with that. And a few we're not opinionated the in the slightest. No, <laughs> no we're all very, all very kickback. It's and like you know, <laughs> who knows? Yeah. Cool. It, it's uh, well, that's, this was this was a lot of fun. I'm glad, I, uh, glad man, you stopped by and it's been good. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, if I can say so, um, yeah, go ahead. there's been we've been chatting a lot, and mm -hmm. you can actually expect to see things from from Pack and Parkwood and yeah. uh, and Tamron in the future. We're hoping to do a lot of workshops with you guys, especially next year, yeah. um, and and bring like ASMP and PPA into the fold because uh, we like to play. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, if there's one thing about uh, photography is it never gets dull because you're always a student. Um, it doesn't matter how long you've been shot, someone else out there knows something or saw something you didn't. And uh, if we can bring optics to the, to the table to help everyone play with that, we're going to yeah. do it. Learning is so, great. Absolutely. Learning something new. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, it's been, it's been a heck something of a year. New. I learned a, this is a really cool piece. It is a cool piece. I'm, I'm pretty excited it's, about this. It's you know, a, I don't do much landscape anymore. Oh, well, it's if, a it, good it, landscape, but it is a good blogging one. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. All we need is a tilty, flippy screen on every camera. I agree with that. <laughs> I absolutely agree with that. Because tilty's great, but I, flippy's the way to go. I'm, w I'm waiting for the first cell phone that's got the screen on the front side and on the back, you know, just to have both the front and forward screen and camera system. I mean, there were cameras that had screens on the front for a while. Samsung did that. Yeah. And that was a really cool setup. So then uh, they got out of cameras. That, yes, well, they did. So uh, there's some rumors. Let's just let's go a couple more minutes. So there's some rumors, rumors. about Samsung. Oh, dear Lord. And a, and a <laughs> camera sensor. Uh, well, so, I mean, Samsung is a sensor manufacturer. I understand that. And, and they are a semiconductor manufacturer. Panasonic is, Canon is, Nikon actually, even though they're designing their, their rumors that they're going to start trying to produce their own. They, yeah. We produce sensors, for crying out loud. So, so, um, so Samsung. Samsung. Uh, really? So the rumor is about the the Panasonic gear. Yeah. Um, I th th no one's ever substantiated anything no, to me. No, it is just not a rumor. Um, at it's this a point. but I I I it. Hmm, how do I hedge this uh, without burning things? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest uh, because rivalries build innovation to a certain extent. Yeah, competition. Um, and so when you have two, uh, when you have the largest and I believe the second largest electronics corporations going head to head at the top of the digital imaging food chain being Panasonic as the largest electronics corporation. Right. So only being number two, um, it wouldn't surprise me if Panasonic decided to go a different route. Um, and, and, and also because they have very specific needs and, uh, and if they have to happen to shop around and someone may even offer them just a better price, yeah. you know, sometimes that's all it comes down to. It's not about Could rivalry, be. it's just about cost expediency. Uh, yeah. it, it makes sense. Um, would that necessarily say that the rumor about the giant shipment of Samsung sensors that seems to be everybody's fantasy yeah, wrote, yeah, yeah. Uh, I couldn't possibly say um, because no one's even substantiated that that shipment existed. Right, right, right. right? So but it is interesting uh, and it gives us something to talk I, about. I everyone's love, everyone's uh, talking about this. So. The internet, if it's on there, it's real. Yeah. Uh, you know, so Amen. <laughs> <laughs> it just is what it is. You know, I mean, it's, uh, uh, I was asked if, if we were getting into 3D imaging and I was like, who, what? Who told you that? I, I don't, I don't, I mean, we certainly have built lenses for it, but not uh, not out front, not like this. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, I mean, we have an, our industrial side, they do whatever they want. They have amazing things uh, where we play in thermoptics and, and uh, infrared, and we're world leaders in that. Um, but uh, we share some architecture to the front side of digital imaging, but we're not, we're not necessarily doing that either. But everyone's like, oh, I thought you were building that now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it would be cool because I would like to see if Samsung's not going to play in cameras, I'd like to see what they could do with a sensor. Yeah, I think, absolutely. I think, right? I think if it came out well, I think it would benefit everybody for the same reason that competition's good for everyone, as, as long as they're not charging an arm and a leg for it. So they're doing their own uh, sensors for their, for their cell phones, though, right? No. Oh, so they're not? That's generally been Sony. Oh, Julie, really Sony? Has <laughs> it really? Yeah. Uh, That's funny. Uh, it's, it's, there are just some times when it's just better yeah. to go that route. I mean, it's, you know, we're a good example of that. You know, Tamron, it's, it's well known that uh, we're an OEM company for a lot of people. Sure. Um, we have a lot of A-list clients, and most of our fan, fans don't know, but you probably shoot something that's, some, that's in some way attached to Tamron. 
Um, it might be on the back of your car. You might have been busted at a red light by one of our cameras. You, you never know where Tamron's going to be. Um, but there are just times when you don't have the time. You don't have the R&D scale. You have to have it out now. You're going to find someone who's good at it, and you're going to make a friend. Yeah. And it's just a friend of necessity. And that is, that is how the industry has survived. Unfortunately, on the way here, we've eaten some of our young. We've, really, we've lost some really great innovators because of it. Uh, but those that have managed to stay, uh, the, the industry is finally back into some growth modes yeah. uh, where for a while it was really shrinking quickly and it got a little scary there for a bit. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but friends and partnerships, just like in any form of electronics and automobiles and cell phones and, and cameras, man, you don't even want to know who's underneath your camera. It ain't Nikon necessarily or <laughs> Canon necessarily. Oh. There's a lot of friends on, on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so. just like it's just cars. Cars are the same way. Absolutely. Everything's not made at Chevrolet. You know? It's it, just not. It, at, least, well, at least for the non-fanboy. But if for fanboys, that's always been a problem. Like, uh, like if you talk to well, someone. the purists. Like, it's absolutely the purists. Like, oh, I'll never buy a Sony. And I'm like, well, then sell your car, sell your cell phone, get rid of your TV. There's a lot of stuff you got to get rid because of. Because yeah. if they didn't build Build it. Someone licensed it from them yep. because they have patents galore. Or if you don't like Panasonic, the same thing. Get rid of your batteries because Panasonic's the single largest battery manufacturer on the planet, next Absolutely to GE yeah. Sanyo. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's if we can get past the name, right? Yeah. As long as it does what you ask it to do when you ask it to do it, then who's to call it anything but the tool you wanted? It's the tool you need. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that that's a big thing for us also. Yep. And so. That's a good way to end this thing. I'm glad yeah. you stopped by. It's, it's been a pleasure. Been talking with you, man. Ah, dude, and, it's uh, awesome. Can I say one thing real yeah, quick? Yeah, one more thing. Yeah, um, go for it. Just, we'll just it for, off. just uh, wherever camera is for camera one. This is your camera. That's my camera right there. Hello to my camera. Um, I am also on Facebook. Uh, please find me at Tamron Rocky Mountain Region on Facebook. That's a direct line to me. Direct message me with any questions you have. My job is to help you create. It doesn't have to be Tamron based. If it's photographically based or even videographically based, I will do my best to help you out. So, um, and if anything, wherever you are, my, my states are the seven Rocky Mountains states uh, from Canada to Mexico. Uh, I keep an event calendar there. If you want to know where Tamron's having some fun, check the event calendar on Tam Tamron Rocky Mountain region and you'll know where I'm in Phoenix or in Denver or in Billings, Montana, man. So, um, but it'd be nice to see you out at one of those events. Cool, so, thanks a lot. Thank you for that. All right. All right. So, so good night, everybody. Thanks good night, for watching. Good night. Good night. We love you all.